Well, good afternoon and welcome to the shop. Um, it is Saturday, May the 1st. Uh, next Sunday is May the 9th, Mother's Day, so keep that in mind. Um, you can probably hear an echo, right? Does it sound cavernous to you? Well, that's because the Mustang is gone. And that's kind of an unusual feeling. I mean, this car had been in here for two years. And as we've all been together, we know it has gone through uh, all sorts of disrepair over the last two years, right? It's been ripped down to nothing, rear frame rails, the entire back half of the car was cut off, right? And a lot of that done over the last two years. And then this morning I came in, I sat in the car, I turned the key, it started, I drove it out and I parked it where it's gonna be safe while we do what we're doing today or this week. And that's a strange feeling. So, but what are we gonna be doing this week? Well, as I mentioned earlier, what I wanna do is I wanna test all of the different things that I wanna do to the Mustang, but I wanna do that before I touch the Mustang. So what do I need to do? Well, the first thing I did is I went out and I bought the appropriate paint. Now I went with Nason. Now Nason is not the top of the line paint by no means, but it's also not the worst. I mean, a lot of people use Nason. There's been no complaints from the perspective of the way the paint flows or the, you know, the quality of the paint, but we'll see anyways. And by the, as I said earlier, so for a total of everything sitting here of $120, I get to paint this vehicle and understand you know, what's it going to look like when the base goes over the white? What's it going to look like when the clear is on it? What's it going to look like with the pinstripes? What's it going to look like when I pull the decals off and reveal the white? All of that is independent of whether or not the color is what I want, because there's the first clue you have right there. I took the Acapulco Blue, which is in this container, I put it on the table, and I used this stick to kind of move it around and obviously transport it to the table. And right away, what a difference in the colors because of the angle, because of the refraction, because of the wood, because of the paper, all of that changes the dynamic of that. So we really don't know what it's gonna look like until it's actually on the vehicle and it's been cleared. And that is why we're doing this, right? So we understand what does this look like? What does it look like here? And what does it look like on the vehicle? Because once I paint the Mustang, there's no going back. If I don't like the shade at that time, I'm screwed. So buy it in small quantities, have a good shot at it. If I don't like the shade after it's on this vehicle, who cares? I mean, when you see it, you'll understand. But basically, we have the clear and of course the hardener. We have uh, the Acapulco Blue. We have a white. We have a reducer. We have an adhesion promoter. Now that might be your first indication as to what we're painting. This is designed specifically that I can now use the 2K that we've been using, but I can spray this vehicle after applying the adhesion promoter in order to make sure the 2K sticks, right? So that's number one. Number two is I have some pinstriping here. And again, I'm not gonna do any fancy pinstriping. I'm gonna add some color to this vehicle in white, but really I just wanna test the bleed through. I wanna see what Spraying the blue over the white will do with the pinstriping. You know, how sharp will those edges be? Is there something I can do different while I'm painting to make the edges better? Um, obviously, the biggest thing I'm worried about is, is what is the blue going to look like sprayed over the white as opposed to sprayed over the 2K? Now, the 2K is a fairly light gray, but it's not white. And the idea is, is you know, do I need more coats? And again, this is perfect for testing. All of this is perfect for testing. There's also some decals here which are letters and numbers, you might start getting an idea of what I'm about to paint. So why don't we take a look and let's uh, introduce you to the project for the next couple of weeks. Well, I told you it was an empty shop. And like I said, it's, it's, it is a weird feeling and I, I don't know how to describe it to you, but for two years, there was a Mustang sitting right here and it was in various states of disrepair. And you know, you, if you've looked at my history of videos, you know exactly what we've gone through over the last two years. It was really strange that it was empty. But without further ado, let me introduce you to the ugliest jet ski you have ever seen in your life. Now, I bought this a year ago for this exact purpose. It was pennies on the dollar because in all honesty, nobody wanted to buy this thing. It just doesn't really look that good. But it runs sweet. I mean, she'll do 50 miles an hour. Uh, it's a fast little machine. But 
it looks like it looks. So when I found this a year ago, I said, this is perfect. This is going to allow me to do exactly what I want to do now. This wasn't an afterthought. This was bought for the sole purpose, well, of enjoyment, but of practice. Getting the white onto this thing, getting the blue onto this thing. Will the blue cover the white? Will the blue look different if it's on the 2K than it does on the um, white? You know, how did the stickers peel off? So obviously I needed to do something with stickers. So this is perfect. The ID numbers on the side, I'm gonna paint this area white. I'm gonna apply the decals I showed you. We'll apply the decals on the side of the vehicle. And then when I, you know, put the blue over the whole thing, we'll peel those off and it should reveal the call letters, but in white. I'm also going to spray the side of the jet ski white and put some of that pinstriping. And again, this isn't, this isn't to put pinstriping on the vehicle so it looks like it has pinstriping. It's to put it on so that I can see what is going to happen with that base. Do I need to put more base near the white? Is there less base near the white? All of that. Those are things I need to understand and, and, and before I even go near the Mustang. So this is a perfect palette to learn all of that. Once I strip this down, fix all the fiberglass, and of course I'll be using glass, not filler, but once I fix everything on this vehicle, I'll be able to come back and I'll be able to use that adhesion promoter on the entire vehicle, and then I can, pray, uh, I can spray the 2K on it. And then once the 2K is on it, we're gonna do just like the car. We're gonna do the prep, we're gonna do the sanding, we're gonna take it to 400. We're then gonna mask it off. We're gonna hit it with the white. We're gonna wait for that white to set up. We're gonna apply the stickers. We're gonna hit it with the blue. Once the blue is set up, or actually we don't wait that long. We wait just until after the blue, the last coat of the blue is on and it's still a little wet. We then pull those stickers off so that we don't tear the blue, right? We want the blue to still come apart, but not to tear. So we get all of the stickers off of it, we let it cure up, and then we come back and hit it with the clear. Now, some cool things um, that was really good. This is somebody, I don't know what they painted this with, but it's a terrible orange, but it's actually blue. I, I know you can't see it from back there, there's only some paint chips coming off, but this is actually blue, so that's perfect. I just gotta strip this and I've got a blue cowl. And the same thing here, this has been painted purple and it's coming apart, as you can see, but it's blue, again. So the, 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 the craft was blue, so I'm just gonna be putting it back the way it was. I'm gonna remove all these zebra things on it. And of course, as we all know, I need a sewing machine and some vinyl, and we've got a new seat for it then, right? I'm gonna replace, obviously, take that old seat, replace it with this new one, stitch it all in, and uh, I have new foam for the gunnels, right? So where your feet go, that'll all be nice and foamed in there. So, like I said, I think this is the perfect project. Um, the one thing I'd like to do, though, is, is and I'm going to check into it, is uh, how do you spray gel coat? I'm going to be looking at that because the hull on this thing is terrible. I'd like this to be a nice, clean, white hull, so I'd like to spray that. And what I did is I actually rigged up a metal bar that's going to grab it from the back and grab it from inside in here. And what it's going to do is I can use my engine hoist and lift this up off of the homemade trailer. And that is a homemade trailer. I built that myself. And that's just so I can scoot this thing around, which is kind of neat. Um, and what happens is that I can now take this, lift it up, and I can get underneath it. And we can do something with the, the bottom of this as well. But if you're interested in following what I'm about to do here, you know, please obviously come back. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. And... Uh, I'll probably see you in a couple of days. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but I'm going to just start pulling this all apart today. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll shoot something a little bit later on, give you a quick update. If not, you know, give me a couple of days because uh, this, this is a mess. Anyways, thanks for joining and I'll catch you later.